Welcome back to the Center for Off-Road Research and Anagans of Science Technical Division. And what I've done here is use my micrometer and, or calipers, whatever you call it, and measured this gap between the ground and the diff. And that is exactly 20 millimeters with the scrambler tires. I'm also going to measure the distance here. And that way I have a baseline for after the portals are installed so we'll know where we came from. And I'll figure out what that distance is real quick, and I'll write that down somewhere so we have it later. And I'm going to try to keep the video moving because I know a lot of you only watch videos for two and a half minutes. So uh, we'll try to keep it going this time. Another dimension here that I would like to measure is the inner wheel track. And without pushing the wheels apart, I just want to touch both. We're going to call it. 66 millimeters so i'll write that down on the board too next i'm going to do some incline tests and just find out where this thing tips over your results may vary slightly on all of these and uh, that's because you build your rigs differently than i do these are the relevant numbers for this vehicle and these are the angles i had the car just sitting in one place and i started tipping it on my yellow uh, clipboard that you've seen in the past for the climbing uh, attempts for the steepest climb and during climbs it tipped over at 61 degrees a right lean 41 left lean 43 descending was 45 a lot of things can affect that i would have got a lot more descending out of it had i not run a double barrel on the right side but i like to do that because it does give a lot more um, droop and uh, another thing that would help the descending would be to add a lot more brass on the tail this is only about a gram and a half uh, aluminum cover. So I'm not running any extra weight on the tail, none. There's no, there's actually plastic uh, beadlock rings inside there. So that's the starting place. And uh, the uh, clearance at the diff was 20 millimeters at the skid plate, 30.5. The inner wheel track was 66 millimeters um, from here to here as we measured before and these are all the things that are are going to change when we start adding portals and changing weights and things like that and i just wanted to make sure that i had the basis for an apples to apples comparison this is what the kit gets you two rear drive shafts two front drive shafts that come out of the knuckle and these are the out these four here are the um ones that go to the actual wheel have the little drive pin slot you have eight long screws eight short screws and uh, four inner and four outer um, portal boxes here and these things are machined so nicely they almost look like jewelry they feel really good when you touch them too and you also get new brass uh, uh, I don't know what you call this I can't remember hubs anyway steering knuckles and then you get the, the kit to put the steering knuckles on. And you know it's for that because it has the sleeves for the hinge pins and these screws. So it looks like a pretty simple system. Just pull the old stuff off, put the new stuff on. I'm going to pre-assemble the outer half of the uh, portal box here. And this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, it's a pretty nice system. These are really closely machined. The gears track really well with each other. Um, obviously it's going to go like that. But... Um, the little screws go on the bottom side and I'm going to get all four of them done at once. All right, these are pre-assembled and ready to go on the truck. Um, in order to put these together, I just have them, the bottom sides bolted on, use the short screws here, just two of them on the bottom. And when you do this, make sure that the output shaft comes out of the opposite side of where the input shaft comes in. Otherwise it's going to try to feed right back into the chassis. So very critical and this this piece here can be installed backwards and the the uh, output shaft can come straight out the wrong way so make sure your output shaft comes out the side with the small hole at the top if you happen to have an issue with one of these screws not catching and you think the holes not right try a different screw in it um, at this point I have a million screws I had one screw that wasn't quite the way it should have been and I replaced it with a good one and it caught and the uh, you may think that first the hole is stripped out but the screw 
actually had bad threads on it. I put a different screw in, it's perfect. So, I mean, at this scale, honestly, look at this. You can't even see the threads. They're so tiny, they're smaller than the fingerprint. So, uh, what do you expect, right? I mean, these things are tiny. I have taken the stock axle out. Now I'm going to put the portal axle in through the same hole. Boom. That was easy. And all you do now is you take the long screws and you screw it right on there like that. And the rear is installed. Pretty simple. And uh, obviously you don't use the stock screws here again or you wouldn't be able to install these on. So... I'll do that one right here and then just show you it finished and move on and we'll do the fronts. Right here we're just going to use two of the long screws to put them on. And uh, very simple. Don't over tighten them, you're putting them into plastic. So um, just a note on that. And there's the uh, right side done, left side to go. So I give you a little drone footage here and you can see how much wider it is with stock wheels or stock spacing on the wheels actually with the portal axle on the back. That's why we have these uh, negative offset wheels to bring those back in and uh, I may actually try driving this a little bit with the wide track and just see how it does. This would be fantastic for outside stuff and uh, that would be kind of fun. I'm going to deviate a little bit here, and this is a rig I bought specifically to um, for test purposes. And I'm going to put on this Mofo RC um, front steering link that I bought, and this is a great thing because it adds nine grams. It's made of brass. And it has this other brass and other hardware with it, and it's similar to the Hot Racing one, but it adds literally nine grams of weight. And it's not weight you'd ever see. It doesn't look bad. In fact, it's really pretty. It's uh, got gold edges on it. Nice chamfered. But this is going to go on the front. And um, I'm just going to pull this entire front uh, suspension off. Because I won't be using anything of this entire uh, C-Hub and uh, crossbar. Because why would I? I've got nice stuff now. So here we go. In case you were wondering, each portal box weighs about 10.7 grams, so uh, you're going to gain that much in weight, so you shouldn't worry about whether um, you're going to get a little bit off on your, your wheel, because you can get it back. And that's 10.7 here, and you also have to include the C-Hub that goes with it, and that's another 8.8 .8 grams. So. Altogether, without the screws to hold it on, 19.5. I'll add the two screws now. 19.9. So you got 20 grams a side already. That's pretty good. This is the weight of the original piece. Non-portal, 9.6. Portal. 22.2 assembled now. I put a little bit of uh, the 3-in-1 oil in there that I really like. Makes the gears track beautifully and uh, at this scale it's so smooth it doesn't even have bearings but it doesn't need them it's unbelievably well machined and uh, look at that why would you need bearings all bearings would do is just get plugged up eventually and these are nice that's pretty good so I bolted this thing together and uh, make sure that your geometry lines up with the piece you took off I only do one side at a time, that way I don't get too confused when I start pulling pieces. So I'll hook this together and screw it down and it will be ready. You may have seen the weights that I previously machined for my um, uh, Injora wheels that have the screws that come out of the back. Well, turns out I can actually use them on this uh, application. That brings the total weight up to 26.5 for that half of the axle. So we're literally adding 50 grams of weight to the front of a car if it was stock. That's pretty pretty heavy for the front, which is what you want. This thing is going to be able to pull itself over hills. I have two other wheel weights here that I can use. And 
one thing you're going to have to be careful of if you do this, if you add wheel weights that are cupped on the back side like this, um, that cup may not be wide enough to fully clear the portal housing. This is a narrower one, and I'm going to try the wider one here just to see if it clears everything. And the wider one still just touches the screws in here. So be aware of that if you're going to put more weight on the front. Uh, you may have to machine down those cups and make them flatter like this. And uh, then they will clear. It's just a fact that the portal axles, uh, the boxes themselves have size and mass. And uh, see that? I've got a, I basically flattened it out. Got rid of some of the weight, but I don't have any clearance issues. There's a side by side comparison. Quite a bit wider on the uh, driver's side there. Anytime you're putting steering knuckles together, make sure they have free movement. If they don't, you're going to burn out steering servos. Now that I've got it put together, the only thing left to do is change the polarity of the motor wire. And I'm going to remove the battery for this because I don't want to accidentally change the uh, polarity of that. That would be bad news. So motor, the uh, battery's out and motor wire's in. I'm just going to uh, swap the plugs around here. And it's really simple. I just do it with the razor blade. Get underneath the catches on this little plug. Don't worry, I'm a professional. <laughs> Watch this. Alright, simple enough. Just get under the catch. Pop the next one out and actually... Uh, taking a little longer than I thought, but that's okay. It should pull right out. There you go. Shove that back in the wrong side. We'll shove this one in the wrong side. Shove this back in the motor hole. The white one's okay. The red one is power. You do not want to confuse those two. You'll burn up your ESC in a millisecond. Well, here are the new totals with the um, MoFo portals on. Um, it pretty much gained five millimeters of height at the diff and the skid plate. Obviously, they're the same, you know, in relation to each other, so they would. And uh, depending on where I measured, I got between 16 and 18 millimeters of inner wheel track extra spacing and I thought that was going to be bad on my course but in the uh, limited time that I run on it it really wasn't I kind of was surprised by that sometimes what you believe and what you measure are two different things so um, it did lose two degrees of climb as far as just sitting still on a plane and me tipping it it uh, now tipped over at 59 degrees but it gained five uh, degrees if the car is turning tip to the right it gained five degrees of tip this way and six this way it's up to 49 on the uh, side hilling descending it lost two and that's just because the center of gravity is so much higher than it used to be and I could get some of that back but I really like running one uh, kinetic shock on the right rear because it gives you a lot more articulation um, the only thing I have to do is uh, I'm going to run this for a while and see if I like it. And then uh, I'm going to swap over to the MoFo uh, negative offset wheels and bring that wheel track back together. But I was actually very impressed. I thought this was going to be horrible with that wide of a track. And it wasn't. This, this is much more capable than I had imagined it would be. So um, I've got some batteries charging right now. 
and I'll do some test runs on that and show you where I thought it would not be good and it turned out to be so um, yeah again what you think and what's real are not always the same <laughs>